I'm so excited to introduce to you now Devorah Rizal. Uh, she lives in Israel. She'll tell us where she's from in a moment. Uh, I want to also thank Devorah Natkin for sharing her contact information, a friend of hers. She had the honor of meeting Rabbi Klein and his Rebbitson, Rebbitson Klein, and we're so excited to hear your story and your encounters that you had with Rabbi Klein. So thank you for being here. Hi. Friends, the loyal sisterhood of Rabbi Klein's fa fans, and anyone who's interested in hearing about him, it's a, it's a, it's just wonderful how we sometimes run into bigger than life type of people that impact us in ways that we don't even realize at the time we're being impacted or influenced by them. And isn't it special that the impact they convey on us isn't because of what they say, but rather how they say it sometimes? Isn't it even more remarkable that some of these special individuals are even more influential by, by what they don't say sometimes than what's said? That was my experience with Rabbi Klein, halav shalom. And it's really a schus, it's a real big merit to, to share some of those impactful memories in honor of his yurt site, his day of passing, and to remind myself how the living should take it to heart. His grace, his nobility, and uncanny sense of humor, they were all incredibly engaging. And I, at the ripe old age of 28 years old, had just arrived uh, for a Crown Heights Shabbat experience after three years of experimenting and dabbling in Chabad ideas in Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks to my, my shluchim, those who guided me, through my journey, Esther and Shlomo Blooming. I'd come prepared to Crown Heights that first Shabbos to investigate and question everything at its source in my attempt to find the real truth about Lubavitch, the Rebbe, and the Chabad Hasidic lifestyle. Thank God my, my Shluchim had chosen the best place possible to arrange for me the most engaging Crown Heights Shabbat experience ever. It's largely thanks to Rabbi Klein and his dear wife, Leah, that this short Shabbos experience developed, developed into a life-changing one that led to my shlichus, my own mission as a, as a counselor and a mentor at Machon Alta in Sfas in Israel, and eventually building my family here in, in Israel and in Sfas for the past 42 years. Upon meeting Rabbi Klein for the first time that Shabbos, I immediately sensed that this rabbi, at that the Rebbe's maskir, the Rebbe's secretary, was well beyond, was wise well beyond his years. It seemed that he knew many secrets that others couldn't fathom, yet respected, he respected the privacy of those who entrusted those secrets to him. He aimed to make people feel happy and comfortable in his home, and he knew just the right things to say that would put a smile on everyone's face with a spicy sense of humor. That gave me the courage to ask innocently, what does he do for a living? He casually and unassumingly answered humorously, well, I'm a postman. Yeah, thousands of people write to the Rebbe, and I deliver the post daily and return their answered letters from the Rebbe. That was the clincher for me. Although I wasn't sure if he was being serious, humorous, humble, or perhaps all of them, it didn't matter. I trusted him and was ready to learn whatever he had to teach me. At that first Shabbos meal, Rabbi Klein encouraged me to ask any questions that were on my mind regarding the Rebbe. I took advantage of the opportunity and piped up with a with a naive and yet bold, hey, this is just great to be a guest in your home, but is there any way you could get me an invitation for a Shabbat meal at the Rebbe's home? Well, right to the point, yeah. He laughed and responded gently, the Rebbe doesn't have Shabbat guests, or maybe something like that. Rabbi Klein really listened. He really cared, and he saw himself as a connection to the Rebbe for many people. I quickly felt at home here and became more convinced to change career directions 
almost immediately as a result of our of my encounter with the family. It wasn't difficult to come to a decision about taking time off from my lucrative research position in order to investigate what was really going on behind the scenes here in this vibrant Hasidic community. After three years of working in a private consulting firm, researching environmental impact projects, I decided to take a leave of absence from my profession in Atlanta, Georgia, and came to Crown Heights for a gap year of learning Hasidic philosophy seriously in Beit Rivka Mechina program. Both Rabbi and especially Mrs. Klein were available whenever I needed, and they both reached out to me regularly throughout the roller coaster ride on this next stage of my Valchuba journey. More than anything, it was the schus, it was the merit of being invited to spend more Shabbos meals than I can remember in the Klein's home that inspired me to grow exponentially in that lifestyle, in the Hasidic lifestyle. The royal atmosphere in their home impressed me tremendously. Israeli military professionals, artists like Baruch Nashon, together with young students, new Balchuvas, and assorted others, raised their Shabbos table week after week after week. Everyone felt at home and comfortable there without exception. Rabbi Klein set a personal example for me of a true chassid and patiently helped me discover my own personal connection to the Rebbe by sharing with me a few inside anecdotes that spiked my in increasing interest in connecting to the Rebbe on my own. Once he stood in the kitchen with both his wife Leah and myself, he held up a can of tuna fish with a bar of chocolate and said, I'm ready to bring the Rebbe lunch. Another time, he encouraged me to invite my father, Oliver Shalom, for a tour of the Rebbe's secretary's office and WLCC, the Lubavitch World Communication Center. He knew that state-of-the-art technology would impress my dear father. When some Hasidim were walking back from Talucha from a parade on the holiday of Shavuos that year, he gestured excitedly to me to run out and get a glimpse of, of his of Rebbe Senchai Mushka watching the parade from behind the curtain of the Rebbe's office window. Towards the end of my year-long stint learning at Beit Rivka in Crown Heights, I was asked by the Kleins to host and help escort Avital Sharansky around the neighborhood. Remember, she was the wife of the refusenik Natan Sharansky way back in the 1980s. In addition, I helped her compose a personal letter to the Rebbe regarding her husband's imprisonment and request for the Rebbe's bracha for his immediate release. After waiting days for her answer, that didn't come, I approached Rabbi Klein about how to help. He suggested waiting with her by the Rebbe's office until the Rebbe would come out. Perhaps she could find a moment to again ask for a bracha. All these precious moments drove me forward until receiving my own personal first written response and blessing from the Rebbe while living in the client's home at the end of my year of study in Crown Heights. Rabbi Klein was on top of all the details needed to help me carry out the Rebbe's blessing regarding starting my mission, my shlichut here in Israel after that gap year. He concerned himself so wholeheartedly with finding me a ride from Ben Gurion Airport to Ramat Ashkol in Yerushalayim where the Kaplun family was ready and waiting to host me for as long as I needed until continuing on to Tzfat as a counselor at Machon Alta. Mrs. Klein made sure that her sister, Nahami Greisman, would take the next shift, would take over taking care of me while adjusting to life in, in Israel. In short, I have no words. My gratitude to the Kleins goes beyond words. I hope the pay payback was and still is at least the nachas, the, the true joy I share with Leah by continuing the Rebbe's lichas, the Rebbe's mission here in Spot, 
for over the past 40 years and raising my children as they set the example. When hearing regards from my past Mahon Alta alumni that have met Mrs. Klein in New York, in Crown Heights at Mahon Layadus or in her home, and they've given her my regards after their gap year in Mahon Alta, I feel reassured that although I took the road less traveled, my journey through Crown Heights proved that made all the difference. Good Yantif, Hag Sameach. Wow, thank you for sharing your beautiful encounters with the Rabbi Klein and um, you merited to meet the Rebbe, which is incredible. And um, it's interesting because everyone has different stories to say, but it's really the same script. Everyone's describing Rabbi Klein. He was just like a very fatherly figure and a kind man and funny and detailed oriented and so busy and he found time for everyone. And it's pretty amazing how even after the fact that you stayed, like he could have just said, okay, bye, nice meeting you. But no, he kept up with you and kept up with all his, of his guests and really made sure they were set up for life, what they needed to take care of. And it's just so beautiful to hear. And I'm so happy that we were able to connect and hear your beautiful encounters with Rabbi Klein. Is there anything that he, uh, like, that you can tell us that really helped mold your future, like from watching him, something that you took on from his home and Mrs. Klein's home? Yeah, I would say that with all the busyness and everything happening outside the home, what struck me was their dedication to family their dedication to giving attention to each member of their family from the youngest to the eldest and to follow up on their welfare and what they needed and who, and being in touch and phone phones were nonstop ringing from all over the world in the home. But it, I was so impressed by, not just impressed, it was so wholesome. And I felt so warmly accepted as part of the family there on the few times in the short time I was living there at the end of that year. Um, and just as a, uh, a proof of it, when my children come to visit or came to visit the clients with me or without me, they would knock on the door, ring the bell or ring the bell, and they would say who they were and they were all, it was like having welcoming family again. And I'll, I'll never forget how Rabbi Klein, I have a beautiful picture of Rabbi Klein sitting on a kitchen stool with my, my youngest son and they're schmoozing. They're just schmoozing and having a, how was, how school, how's life, you know, it, you felt part of the family. And to me, that is a lesson to take, take for life. It's just a lesson for life for my students. I try to give that that feeling in my own home, and I think it a it's just a, it's just an amazing um, quality that everybody counts, no matter where they are from, where they're at, where they're going. Every single Jew, every single person counts and matters, and uh, yeah. That is, uh, for me, a uh, a lesson for life. When is the... Devora? I just want to thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your beautiful encounters with the Klein family because they're a whole. They were all part of this together. The children, um, Rabbi Klein and Mrs. Klein, and they were like a unit that really gave their you know, their space and their time and knowledge and wisdom and love to so many people. So really, thank you so much. And I hope in the future, we'll get you to possibly be a guest speaker, because it seems like you have a fascinating story. And I'm looking forward. And thank you. And I'm sure I'm sure Rabbi Klein really um, is smiling upstairs to see all of his uh, children and uh, adopted children uh, yeah. and 
what they accomplished because it's pretty, pretty amazing. Everything I'm hearing from each, each person is just incredible. So it just takes one person to make a difference in someone's life. And it's so easy. And sometimes it's not about words. It's about actions. Like you said, actions speak louder than words. So uh, we all have a responsibility for the people around us. So thank you so much and humbled to have met you. Thank you. It's the, it's the merit, privilege. Thank you. Thank you Very, so, so much. Only good news and have a wonderful holiday, everyone. Yes. Okay.